Hello there, everyone. The Andrada here, and welcome back to episode three of our Uncharted Expeditions Let's Play series, where today, well, we figure out how to get into the bank vault. Do we get any of the vaults open? You're going to have to watch and find out. Welcome back, my friends, to another wonderful, glorious, beautiful day here in the world of the Andrada. Uh, where, well, in between episodes, I've done a little bit of basing, base, base designing and everything. You can kind of see a little bit here. Like I said, I'm trying this series to be a little bit more cognizant of my design process and everything. Uh, so I'm just trying to make things look a little itty bitty bit nicer. I'm not like the greatest or anything, but I'm satisfied with what we've got. Uh, so uh, we'll talk about this stuff in a second. But if we turn around, we got our base. Um, you'll notice that I've switched over to this red wood. Um, I went and uh, when I went to go get that flax that I had seen all the way over there, I ran into some magnolia trees. Um, I see some enemies on the map over here. I just want to see what they are because those shorts are annoying. Um, Anyway, I saw some magnolia trees over there and they had this wonderful looking redwood. And I'm like, you know what? I like the purple that we had here, the mauve. But I think that the red helps it stand out, but still blends in to a degree, I guess. I don't know. I am no artiste. So uh, to me, I think it looks great. I like the look of it and everything. Um, I don't know. I think it looks good. It's enough contrast that it it stands out from the trees and everything, but I still think that it, overall it blends in. I did keep some of the mauve in the design, and you'll notice I did put a roof on there. I've been growing spruce and chopping stuff down. Uh, let's go ahead and sleep through this night. You're going to also notice I added some windows with a little bit of mauve on the inside as well to uh, help balance out the, the magnolia. Uh, so I added some mauve window panes here so we can see outside. So we're not just inside of a nice box and everything like that. Uh, and then I added that mauve top border thing here going on just because I th thought it looked good. No windows on the front. I don't really know how to put windows on the front. Um, I tried them over here, but it just it doesn't look right with the logs near there. Um, and obviously right here, the window panes, uh, they can't connect to the door. So it just doesn't look right. So we have no windows out the front but we do have a door there i could change the door to be the mauve i think honestly that might be a, a good idea um uh, well no because you don't have first off yeah you don't have any windows so yeah like the the window has obviously windows but the door doesn't have any windows in there and i like being able to see out the door so i think we can keep it there i don't want to do the magnolia i think that'd be too red red um but anyway, yeah, so uh, inside the base, nothing really changed too much over here. I did go ahead and upgrade some of our barrels over to the sophisticated barrels. Um, in order to do so, first off, it was a quest. Um, if we come over here, if we run out of inventory space, use some barrels and stuff. Um, but sophisticated barrels, uh, it allows us to upgrade our um, barrels, just like you could the backpacks from sophisticated backpacks. Um and so you use this basic tier upgrade to do so, which is just some redstone torches and some st sticks, not too complicated. Um, and when you do, you can kind of see here, like, do I have a regular barrel? Uh, no, that's a sophisticated storage barrel. Um, you can see they have like this little indent on them. You see, there's an indent. A regular barrel doesn't have that indentation. Um, so it's very easy to visually tell which barrels you have upgraded and which ones you don't. Uh, and I went ahead and upgraded a lot of these to copper version um, because while well, we were running out of space and a lot of them and everything. Uh, so I upgraded them to the copper version, which is just eight copper nuggets or copper ingots surrounded by a redstone torch. Um, you're going to notice I have a lot of materials and everything. Um, so not a lot, but quite a bit of copper, some iron ready to, to be cooked up and things like that. You know what? Let's just go ahead and grab a set of eight of that uh, and we can go ahead and smelt that up and just get it going and because I have a mine I went and added a mine let's talk about everything going on outside um I got some nice pathing here ooh ah for me that's an ooh ah because I never do it over here on this side I set up some fence and I captured myself some cows and some sheepies um so that way we could have some uh you know materials or cows and stuff as we need them um and then on the other side I set up a farm uh, with all of our basic resources. And if you remember when we explored that thing over here, uh, we got that totem of growth or whatever this thing is called. This thing works fantastically. It does have to be planted on dirt. Um, it is a plant. It doesn't have to be farmland. It can be grass, block, dirt, whatever. Um, 
but it has like a nine by nine area, which is quite large and it makes things grow pretty dang fast. Um, you can right click to harvest crops. Uh, however, you notice I'm not able to do it now. I am right clicking in order to do so. You actually have to hold a hoe in your hand. And I believe that is actually one of the quests that talks about it. Right click to harvest feature. You still need a hoe to harvest your crops. The higher the hose tier, the wider its harvest radius. Granted, we have vein mining, so you can, it works in conjunction with vein mining. So I don't know if that's necessarily necessary. Um, but yeah. Uh, so I do have a hoe. I do want to show you that I did get a backpack. There was a skeleton around here that had spawned that spawned with a backpack and I happened to get lucky and kill him and the backpack dropped. So, uh, that took care of the backpack quest. I was going to be able to make everything for the backpack. I have enough flax. I've been saving up all the supplies for this, um, leather. We'll, we will get leather here in a moment and talk about leather, but like, yeah, I was saving up all the supplies and then I happened to have that dropped. So I do have a backpack. And I went ahead and upgraded it to copper because it's just a copper surrounding the backpack. Bam. And then you can get to copper. Next tier is silver, which we do not have access to silver. I believe we have to go to another uh, dimension to get ourselves some silver. But anyway, you get your hoe. You can vein mine. Just make sure that you right click and you will harvest all of the crops at once, which is great. And then you can pick them all up. So I've got carrots. I've got beetroot. I've got wheat. I've got flax. I've got potatoes. And I have ginger because I have uh, read that ginger is going to be needed. I probably should... Um, plant more of this ginger and get rid of maybe the beetroot. I don't know how much beetroot we're going to need, but I know that we need a lot of ginger. It's mainly for the um, habit ginger bread, right? Um, ginger bread. Ginger bread is used for crafting stuff. If I remember correctly, maybe you gingerbread man. If I remember correctly, gingerbread is used in crafting. Ginger usage. You make burger buns. Is it the burger buns that are used? Uh, something uses this ginger that I need a lot of ginger for. Is it this ginger? You make the gingerbread. Chicken soup. Sounds delicious. Anyway, I know we need ginger, so I got ginger going. Okay, now is this the same ginger? Did I end up with ginger? Oh, I did end up with ginger. Okay, yeah. Anyway, I know we need ginger, so we got ginger. Let me go ahead and uh, empty inventory. You're going to notice that my inventory gets quite full here, especially in the plant drawer, uh, mainly because of the quality crops, uh, some of those taking up duplicate spots and everything like that. Um, but if we head down from our base, you pop over here. This structure was already here with the this andesite and stuff, so I just left it here, and I figured, hey, good place for a mine. So it's it's our mining area. Nice little uh, lantern posts and everything out of the mob. Stick to the path, the Andrada. And if we come down here, um, I made this nice little pier. Uh, and hello, Mr. Fox. How are you? Wait. That bro stole something from me. I have a trash can there with the lava. Get over here. What'd you take? I don't want to kill you. I didn't want to smack him. He straight up swiped something out of my inventory, and I don't know what it was. Did he? Did I have anything? I don't know. He can go free. Whatever it was, I don't remember it, so it don't seem like it was that important. Uh, anyway, so, uh, yeah, all kinds of stuff. Little trash can here. We need to throw stuff away. We've got, you know, boop throw it in there and then we have a dock because i know we're going to be needing to do some fishing so why not have a nice little dock i cannot take credit for this dock i saw this on youtube uh on how to do this thing with the campfires and everything um and uh, the, the barrels so I, I don't take full credit on that um i do take credit for the magnolia slabs because i like those though so. uh but yeah we got a nice little dock going on here for us these guys are friendly by the way those little sirens i did swim by one just to see what in the world would happen and nothing happens i bet you if i attacked him he would not be happy um but yeah so that's all i did between episodes i've just been i've just been mining i've just been cleaning up the base and everything if we pop down into the mine you're gonna see i mined all the way down to bedrock here um iron is really the biggest thing you're not supposed to be there you're supposed to be there thank you um iron is the biggest thing that we needed and everything uh and after a little bit of google foo it says that iron in 1.20 is found mostly on level feet at y level 16 uh so i mined quite 
a bit. Not terribly too much, to be honest. Um, I just made a whole bunch of stone pickaxes uh, and then just mine down and then mine back and then anything that is, you know, gatherable, I gathered. If we go down, there's really not much down here. Uh, we didn't really end up in too many caves or anything like that. We found this little cave here uh, with some drop leaf that does continue off in that direction. And then there's this area here, which we can explore. And then there was this area. Now, I did not light this area up very much, so I don't want to stay there too much in case mobs spawn. And then we got bedrock down there. We don't need to go see that. Um, and we'll be back when we get to the top. This is annoying. So, yeah. That's basically where we're at. Nice, nice little base going on. And as we expand and everything, I'll try and keep it cognizant of the uh, the design. Uh, been given a few tips and tricks as we explore and everything, especially when it comes to villages on ways to make sure that we can loot our villages. So since we do have a village, I want to go ahead and pop over there and uh, test some of these theories out about what we don't need is the backpack. We don't need the upgrades anymore because I've upgraded those. A um, couple of things on our to-do list that I would like to get done is a leather tanner. So we can grab those kind of things really quick. It is a quest anyway, um, but it does help us finish off uh, some things. Leather tanner is going to help us get leather. The roaster is going to help us get some food and then a cutting board. It's just handy for uh, a lot of different recipes and stuff that we need to use our flint knife for. So let's go ahead, uh, you know, outside of the uh, farm that we have going on over here, we can go ahead and set up our leather tanner and we can set up our roaster. Now, the roaster does need a campfire. Uh, and actually, you need to set a campfire up underneath that. So let's go ahead and um, do so. Now, does a camp will a campfire light that tree on fire? In order to do a campfire, you actually need a log of any sort uh, or any burnable log. I think it does require an actual log, though. Uh, we'll set the campfire or the roaster up over here. Uh, but the way that this works is you do this and in your uh, you actually need a piece of coal. And it's about to be nighttime, so we can go ahead and sleep. You need a piece of coal and you need a flint and steel. Uh, you main hand the coal or you main hand the flint and steel, you offhand the coal or maybe the other way around. Uh, and you end up with a campfire. Let's go ahead and look up the recipe for that just to make sure I put those in the right spot. Campfire. Uh, main hand, offhand. Yeah, I have that right. And there we go. So with this, we should be able to get a campfire going here. Bada bing, bada boom. There we go. So now we have a nice campfire and we can take our roaster and place that over the campfire. And there we go. And we can always light the campfire again with our flint and steel. Uh, so with that, we can go ahead inside and I did take out a few cows and pigs and stuff like that. So we have some sheep carcasses, some cow carcasses. I guess I didn't take out any pigs. Um, now, cowhide, uh, you can there's a couple different ways that you can get this. And let's talk about sheep or the carcasses. Let's roast a sheep and then tan a cow. Is that going to work? Do I just put this on here or do I actually need to get the hide? Uh, back here where we imagine a juicy, okay, craft a roaster. Okay, that was that. Um, mastering the art of butchery with a knife on larger animal carcasses. You'll obtain various types of animal hides can be directly substituted for leather and crafting ways, but you can maximize it with the tanner. Lay the hide on the tanner and then onto the pair of shears, right click on the hide multiple times. It will transform the hide, yielding several larger pieces. Okay, uh, no, I didn't want to do you. Give me the cow. Do I need to actually rotate this thing? Do I need to provide rotation somehow? Right click on an animal kit, let's magic happen. No, okay, so we can just go ahead and boop, throw the shear there. Now with our, um, I'd like to test this out actually with the cutting board. Can I place the cow carcass on the cutting board and then attack it with my flint knife? No, okay. That's what I wanted to know. Thank you. Okay, so the way that this works um, is I place the cow carcass on the ground and then I go at it with my knife and then I can end up getting the different materials. It's brutally lovely. Uh, so then again, with the sheep, I do the same thing. Go at it with my knife and I'm right clicking. I don't know if left clicking would work with the knife. No, you do have to right click and you can kind of hear it squelching over there, which is absolutely lovely. Uh, and then apparently you can take the hides and lay them here to tan them. This is a roasted sheep. Do I have to break that every time to get that off of there? I did get some mutton out of it. 
let's roast my sheep and then I'll see if I can right click to get that off later. But yeah, lovely, lovely little setup there. I'd like to actually set up a uh, chest out there to leave all this stuff out so I don't have to keep coming back in here. We'll put the cutting board inside of here because we're going to use that eventually, I'm sure. Uh, wrong button. You go there. Shears. You can go there with a memory. And hoe goes in there. Okay. So that takes care of that. Uh, let me just check on the leather tanner. Do I need to do anything special? Oh, I can just right click on this to get the stuff out of there. And I end up getting bones and I got more mutton that time. So that's good. And it's a good source of food. So yeah, anyway, that's that. Sweet, sweet, sweet victory. So with the villagers, let's go pop over to this village and let's see how this works. Uh, it was mentioned to me in the comments by one good Scott Christofferson, longtime viewer of the channel. Thank you, sir. Uh, that if we come over to the village, uh, actually, you know what? I need to go ahead and grab my lava. We have a couple different options for things that we can do to uh, take care of A, the iron golems, and B, stop the villagers from being able to um, see us robbing them absolutely completely blind. So let's grab our, our trash can there and swim on over here. I should build a bridge to connect this so I don't have to swim over all the time. Maybe, maybe that's something I can do in between next episode. Um, but anyway, we come on over to this village, easy trading or easy villagers, easy villagers is in the mod pack. So with that being done, I can go ahead and can I do it to you? No. Okay. I can't pick up the guards, but I should be able to pick up the villagers that are around, which means that nobody would be able to tattle on me for robbing them. Makes sense. So if I can pick up the villagers, I might be on easy street here when it comes to robbing. Oh, look, now nobody's going to see me rob this chest. What if I crouch too? Oh, okay. Uh, we got a shell, some bacon, and some leather boots. Okay. So nobody should be upset that I robbed this leather worker because they couldn't see me do it. I'm waiting to see an iron golem running towards me or something along that sort. So far, though, I seem to be... Y'all are trapped. All of them are in there. That's entertaining. Let's grab you. You don't have a chest in here, though, but that's fine. Why are you all congregating in here? I'm going to go ahead and just grab them all. A, easy trading is in here, so when we get we can get a trader set up eventually and be able to utilize these villagers for jobs. And B... Now nobody can tattletale on me. Ha ha, losers. Okay, so are we free to loot this village? Obviously, we want to go up there to the vaults, but as long as there's nobody else around here, nobody should be able to see me rob this place. Or not. I thought loot was supposed to be really good. Hello, sir. Look, he's not angry at me, so he, he doesn't know that I just robbed that guy blind. Oh, hello. You guys have loot in here, too? You having a little powwow? Not anymore. Okay. Where's your loot? Bring me thy loot. Where's my tribute? I am protecting your village here from nobody but myself. So I demand loot as a sacrifice here. Blast furnace. I'm definitely going to take the blast furnace. Those are a pain. Uh, and smooth stone. If I break that, does that break into smooth stone? Yeah. I'll take smooth stone. Not that it's complicated to get, but and bricks too. Sure, why not? Just helps us not have to get them. Uh, we do have the villagers humming and hawing in my bag, which is kind of annoying. We can solve that, though. Just leave me alone. Okay, that was good. The big thing that I wanted, though, was to come into here and... Check out these vaults. A, there's chests down here. And B, uh, the Iron Golem, we should have a plan to deal with this guy. And that plan involves the Bucket of Lava. He doesn't count it as me attacking him when I Bucket of Lava him. Pick it back up so nothing catches on fire. Okay. 
And there we go. He has no idea that it was me. I am the one who is doing this to you, buddy. Ha 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 ha. Now we have no fear of the Iron Golem. Thank you, Mr. Christofferson, for this. Oh, nice little flower. Is that like from a... Is the flower a reference to La... Oh, geez, Louise. Okay. Uh, 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 I should have turned no fire spreading on. Excuse me. I'd like to... Okay. I don't even know how that, that got through the floor, but whatever. Now we should be safe to loot all this stuff, though. Dismay a dozen. That's the quest for completing, uh, looting ten chests inside of here. Yeah, look, there's barrels. You can actually see the barrel. There is no indentation. I'm going to take these barrels, though. Not that they're hard, but they're a pain. Loot, loot, loot. Let's grab all the loot. Lots of food and a side alloy. I know that is a pain to get. Um, quite a few advancements made. Barrel, 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 barrel. Okay. And a side alloy. Um, backpack. Let's put these library, the villagers in there. We'll take the books. We don't need that sapling, though. That's fine. More food. Antique ink. We'll take. I know that is... Something that's not extremely easy to get. And then we have our vaults. Now, opening the vaults is going to require us to do a little bit of stuff. Um, the vaults, I believe, yeah, you have to do an empty hand. But if you can see here, what could this possibly be? We have to figure out what is, oh, and does it reset every time? Thief 2. Does that mean I... Oh, I have Thief attached to me because I tried to open the vault. That's good to know. So I need to make sure I stay down here so that I don't go and trigger those guards that are out there. But anyway, um, you can see here that this is some sort of uh, terracotta, right? So if we go here and we look at terracotta, what kind of terracotta could it be? Probably white terracotta based on the coloring. Uh, this is red wool. This is that, I don't know, something six. These things. Oh, a yellow D6. Or a lime D6. Lime D6. How do you make that? Some dye, lime dye, clay, buttons, and black dye. Okay, so there are just various things that you need. Gray concrete, black terracotta, white terracotta. And then inside of here is supposed to be the good loot. All right? The best of the best loot is what's supposed to be inside of there. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to explore uh, those things uh, over the next couple episodes. I don't know if the type of loot inside of there changes, but we know we need different types of terracotta. We know we need different kinds of wool, and we know we need different kinds of dye. So let's go ahead and we're just going to put wool, terracotta, and then D6 and just See what is it going to take for us to get the different colors of everything? Like, what do the different dyes cost? Are you just still bone meal? Can I get, see, we can't just get, oh, yeah, we can. Okay, I was like, we can't get white dye from bone meal, but we can. But where are we going to get terracotta from? It's just clay. We have a bunch of clay. Okay, so good. But like these D6, where is black dye? Other, like, renewable resources. Obviously, I know inks are squids, and there's a bunch of squids out there. But do we have a renewable resource of uh, black dye that we have access to at this point in time. If we chop ink sacks, we get two, so it's a little better. Um, we can scrape soot from a chimney. Mud bricks requires packed mud, requires mud with some straw. And then we would need uh, some coal, and that makes a mud brick chimney. And you just turn into dirty mud brick? Is that literally all you do? And then I can use that to make black dye, and it's only a 75% chance. So that, there is a slightly renewable resource there. Um, but yeah, anyway, we got about three minutes before this timer's done, and it's about end for the episode. So I think we will just end the episode here in the vault. And uh, yeah, if you enjoyed today's episode, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, tips, tricks, anything like that. I do appreciate it. It really does help out the channel. 
uh, like you said, or as I said, uh, new to this pack. I know there's a lot of changes, so if you have any suggestions, I'm absolutely open to them. I will be reading pretty much all of the comments on the videos, so throw them my way. All right. Uh, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Have a good one.